Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do is open the index.html file. Uh, we've got in the project, uh, we've got to add uh, buttons for the user to initiate scan barcode or um, take photo of the comic. So um, into the index.html, we're going to add a couple of buttons. Let me just show you where. When we save a comic, um, we've got these fields that we've been working with before. Uh, and from this screen, we're also going to uh, have a, a button uh, scan barcode and a button take photo. So in the save comics section, in the index HTML, we're going to add a couple of buttons. Let's find that section, PG save comics. PG save comics. It's at about line 140. It starts at 146 or so. Uh, we've got our section uh, save comic. So after what already exists there, we've got um, line 168 notes. On line 168 label in notes for the text notes and then a text area for them to write notes uh, right after that we're going to add a, um, a couple of buttons yes say that again PG save comic we're gonna say we're gonna add this when we save the comic the ability to also scan the barcode so this area is divided into its own section in the field set of optional. So it'll be optional that we scan the barcode. It'll be optional that we take a photo. What I want to do is add an, add an HR, a horizontal ruler, just a little uh, visual marker after notes, after the notes that this, um, that we've got a couple of items here. Um, so the barcode, it, even though it looks like you know a bunch of lines and it looks like a little graphical thing, what it encodes is information or text, text and numbers. Uh, so we want to save the data that's encoded in that visual element. And the way we can do this is we can temporarily hold on to the data that is in that barcode. We're going to store it temporarily in an input field scan the barcode, store it in an input field, uh, and then when we save the comic, well, we just read from that input field and save it to the database as we always did. So we'll have an input field of type text. Text can encompass letters and numbers and symbols. Placeholder, uh, we'll just say something like barcode. This needs an ID so that we can uh, look what's in it via JavaScript or write something into it via JavaScript in barcode. We won't need to do a, a, a label for it. So this input field will temporarily hold the barcode, and then we read the barcode, save it to the database. Something very similar, we'll do this also for the um, well, so then we need a, uh, a button here, input type button, generic button. We've had previously input type submit, um, input type uh, reset. Well, we've, I think we've done one other time perhaps, or maybe two, input type button, which is just a generic button that doesn't have any meaning until we write the JavaScript. Well, this button is going to be for uh, actually initiating scanning the barcode. 
So value is what appears on screen. We'll say scan barcode. This button will say scan barcode. And ID BTN scan barcode. So there will be an input field that after we go through the process of scanning the barcode, the result of the scan will be stored in this input field and then collected when we save the comic. While we're here, we'll also add the, the button for uh, taking a photo. Input. Type text. This one will, will have uh, no placeholder, but it'll have an ID of in photo. And we need the button that initiates taking the photo. Take photo, snap picture, whatever wording you want. Uh, the value is what appears on the button. And then the ID, BTN, uh, take photo. This is our button that will allow us to take a photo. This is going to be. This is going to work almost exactly the same as the barcode, in that there is an input field that will hold something. When when we do uh, this in a little bit after this one, um, the short answer is that uh, we take a photo, but we're not saving the raw data of the photo to the database. Uh, these pouch databases or any database doesn't actually hold the raw data, and this is something I talked about a while ago when we did the assessment. Remember the assessment about uh, random social networks? You're not actually storing the raw pixel data of a photo in a database. You could, we could with Pouch if we wanted, and you could with any database. They usually don't store the raw data. You store a location, you store a path to where the data is in the file system. So the photo is going to get saved to the device, to the gallery somewhere on the memory card, which has a path attached to it. This photo is in this folder in the device. So what we're storing in the database ultimately is the path to that photo. It's just text then. So another input field that after we take a photo, the um, path to that photo will be stored into that field. And that's what we're storing in the database, not the raw pixel data. Yes? So you wanted to log in on an account on a different device, the photos won't show up. That's, uh, that's correct. The photo only will appear to the user that took the photo. Just like everything else here, I've got an account. I've, I'm logged in as Peter Parker. I only see my comics that I've saved. Then Bruce Banner logs in, and he sees only his data. So yeah, whatever photos we take here, uh, really only the person that took it will know that they took the photo. Now, what we're going to do slightly different here is it doesn't really, the user doesn't really need to see this. So, you know, in, in, with the curtain pulled back, they don't need to see that the photo <coughs> is, you know, img072.jpg. Um, that's what would be stored in this input field. Take the photo, and then the value of this input field will be the path to the photo. The user doesn't need to see that. The user could see the barcode we scan here. They'll see it right there in this input field. They don't really need to see this. And now, this, these are some of the aspects of the app that you can change how you wish, depending on you know what, what kind of style or whatever you want to portray in the, in the app. So what I'm saying is I don't, I, I don't want the user to see the path to the photo. And the easy way to do this is just to add a couple of properties here. One of them is hidden. This input field will be hidden. Now, whatever's in the input field, we can still view uh, via JavaScript. We can still uh, extract it. We can still set it. But by having the hidden property, the user won't see it. I'm also, just to be safe, putting in disabled. The user doesn't need to edit 
that input field. Um, what would happen there is uh, a person could go in and rename the path to the photo. That's not good at all. They're going to break the connection to the photo. So I've hidden and I've disabled from editing that input field. We can write a note here to remind us of that hidden attribute so user doesn't see the path to the photo. Disabled attribute, so user doesn't edit the path to the photo. We need to know what the path is, of course, so that we can save it in the database and retrieve it later on. But uh, the user doesn't need to see it and definitely doesn't need to edit it. Yes? Exactly. The photo is going to be the photo is going to be taken and it's going to be saved into the memory card of the device. And there is a path of where that photo is on the device that we're going to store in our database. So those are the two things we add in the uh, HTML file. Oh, uh, four things. Two things conceptually: an input field plus a button for the scanning of the photo, and then a um, um, an input field and a, and a button to start the, the photography. So we'll go back to the uh, index.js and we'll set ourselves up to be able to scan the barcode and the photo. So in index.js One of the first things we need to do is we need to go to where we've uh, created the object of the comic that we're saving. And that's in line approximately 305. Let's go to the index.js. Temp comic. This is where we, we build the object that has all of the data that defines a comic. Um, its title based on the input field that the user typed. Notes based on the input field that the user typed. Well, we need two more fields here. One to store the barcode and one to uh, store the photo. So very, very important at the end of line 312 where we have unique ID, you need to add a comma. Do not forget this comma. We're about to add a brand new field, a brand new key and value pair to this JSON data. At the moment, the very last unique ID is the last item in the JSON data, so no final comma. We're about to add two more fields. Remember to add a, a comma there. Next line, because then we're adding the barcode field. That is going to be the value of the. That is going to be the value of that field uh, of a variable we have not created yet. But let's let's add it here. Then we'll backtrack. We're going to have eventually val in barcode. We don't have that yet. Right? We had created val in title, val in year. We had created that before. Uh, we have not created val in barcode. We'll do that in a moment. But the idea here is we're adding a brand new field to our data in the database. Barcode, comma. Don't forget that final comma there. And then here we have photo. So now we've got a photo field. And that is going to be val in photo. No final comma. So remember, add the final, add a comma to unique ID at the very end. Then barcode, comma, photo, no comma. So we can add any fields to our data whenever we want. We created our original scheme uh, for saving our data. It had these fields, title, number, year, etc. 
but then now we've got these new ones, barcode and photo. Uh, if we were trying to if we were trying to read data from the database uh, a barcode to something we made you know last week we would get an undefined it would say undefined back to us because there is no barcode there was no barcode field in our data in the database a week ago now there is uh, but if we're starting from this point moving forward we know we've got a barcode field in our database that we can retrieve Okay, so we'll back up a little bit to where we've got our code where we're defining all of these. Right here. So when the function starts, function prep comic, that's where we set up, well, what are all of these values? Where are they coming from? And based on what we've got here, it should make sense what we need to write. We've got val in title is made by selecting the value of this input field with that ID comma do it again several times we need to change that to a comma because we're gonna borrow the var keyword after we've created val in notes change that to a comma then we're gonna create val in barcode and val in photo so remember to change that final this time, change it from a semicolon to a comma. Val in barcode equal to the dollar jQuery selector pound sign in barcode dot val method. Check what the value in that input field is store it in val in barcode so that we can use it 20 lines down when we save it in the JSON bundled data next same thing val in photo selecting the element with an ID don't forget the pound sign in photo dot val method parentheses and then there semicolon so make sure that's a comma at the end of in notes and then a semicolon in photo Confirm the spelling and such. Val in barcode selected here. Right there, val in barcode. Then val in photo. Val in photo. And because it's separate files, ID in barcode. And over here, in barcode. In photo, in photo. So you may do a in photo. You may want to do a quick double check right there that you've spelled them both because obviously it's two separate files. It doesn't autocorrect or auto, uh, yeah autocorrect. And uh, if it doesn't work, well, you probably misspelled. Okay. So next we need to make those buttons active. We've set up our prep comic function, which will collect the values in those input fields. Uh, and then once they're collected, they're bundled together in there, which then eventually is saved into the database. Well, in order to initiate um, scanning the barcode, taking the photo, we need to set up our objects for those buttons and then make those event handlers after you click. Let's back up to where we've got all of these variables about our various objects like buttons and all of that. This is at about line 240 before the first function. 
we need to create an object for the um, scanning the barcodes. So line 239, variable dollar $l btn um, scan barcode equal to id btn scan barcode. So we've done that several times. We um, uh, use the jQuery selector to find an element with that ID, and then we make a jQuery object, jQuery based object in JavaScript. Same thing for the other one var $l btn uh, take photo. That is based on the btn take photo button. Note objects for uh, scanning barcode and taking photo. You might want to say note. Remember to activate the um, correct plugins in config XML. First, I guess not really first, but also um, taking the photo or scanning the barcode. Even if you write all of this code correctly, if you never added those plugins in Config XML, it will not work. It'll say, "I don't know what it means to Cordova dot scan photo," because we didn't activate the Cordova plugin in Config XML. That was the last thing we did last time. And in the notes here, we'll remind ourselves: well, these are going to work via those plugins. Then we'll go to the portion of our code where we've got all of our on-click event listeners. On the event of a click of btn scan barcode, run the function, function scan barcode, and then start to do the process of scanning the barcode. So after we add those objects there, let's go to the end of our code where we've got our event listeners. line 663 dollar lbtn scan barcode we'll do that one first click run the function uh, function uh, scan barcode Going to be very basic. Click the button, run the function. While we're here, we'll also uh, create the other um, the other event listener. We're going to need to comment this one out um, for the time being. JavaScript will get confused that you've got an event listener. Uh, waiting to be clicked to run a function that doesn't exist since we're going to spend a little time first on the barcode and that one doesn't exist you might get errors in the code and remember when any error happens your whole JavaScript code deactivates and then it's like it suddenly nothing works even though everything worked a moment ago so let's comment it out we're going to remember to uncomment that when we need to get to that Part in a little bit, something that we did last time. Uh, a few of you, however, forgot to uncomment that out, and that was causing problems. So for the moment, comment out clicking to take a photo. Just comment it for the moment, then we'll uncomment it when we get to it. 
Okay, let's then define our function to scan the barcode. So we've got to define function, scan barcode. We'll back up to where we've got our, our last um, function. And we'll have the note here, um, third party plugin to scan barcodes. I'm going to put the note here of where we got that plugin since it wasn't one of the core um, it wasn't one of the core ones you get it straight out of uh, config XML you can put this if you want but this is the this is the full link to to get that plugin the documentation of the plugin let's say The documentation for how to fully use that plugin is there. I already have a goal of how we're going to use it, but if you further want to read on it. Um, and many times these plugins made by third parties, um, you know, they, they create a, a cool, useful plugin and all of that. They put it out there for free, and, and oftentimes they're not averse to you um, donating for their efforts. Uh, people might have, you know, a PayPal or a Patreon or, or whatever, and they ask, "Well, I put out this plugin. If you really like it, maybe think about donating two dollars, five dollars, and whatever." And I and I do recommend, if there are, if there is software that you use on a regular basis or code or plugins and such, and it has been useful to you, I would recommend donating even a small amount. A lot of people create these plugins. They they love coding. They want to help. They want to be part of open source, but they'd also like a little bit of money off of it, perhaps. So if you donate, I think there is a donate button there, and if it's useful for you, I would recommend it. So let's do. Yeah, I think it's very useful because it, it really motivates people. I know, uh, like I create content that when people donate to me, it really keeps me going uh, and shows that people are interested. So I do so when it's. Uh, something uh, that I like and uh, important in my apps. So function scan barcode. We'll do the usual here to confirm proof of concept that um, this function is running once you click the button. So obviously if you see this in your console log when you click the button to try to scan the barcode, if you see it then at the very least pressing the button works. Um, if you're trying to troubleshoot this and it's not working, I press the button, nothing happens. If you don't see that message, that's one of your first indicators something's wrong. And I would work backwards, checking the spelling is all correct. And I've seen it several times that uh, what you named it in the JavaScript file is slightly different than what you named it in the, in the HTML file, just because it does not autocomplete across files. So the actual code to scan um, a barcode is Cordova dot plugins dot barcode scanner with a capital S dot scan. This comes from the documentation by the developer of this plugin. You can go read all the details there. 
And so there is a Cordova specific object um, that we have access to once we have Cordova JS in our project, which it's always been there, but we haven't written any Cordova specific code yet. There are many, many, many plugins out there. Specifically, this one is the barcode scanner, capital S. This then further has a method to scan. Let's scan a barcode. We also have the opposite, which is, I believe it, they call it encode. We're going to create a barcode. So we're going to activate the ability to scan a barcode. What's so cool about this is all of these plugins and what Cordova is doing is it's translating JavaScript into the appropriate code per device. So basically there's magic happening here in that this is all that we need to write and somehow internally when it runs on an Android device it knows what code to write to turn on the camera to start the whole feature of scanning. And the same app uh, running on an iPhone um, would then Cordova would translate the code uh, so that it knows how to turn on the camera and scan the barcode. Well, similar to pouch in that when we do db put or db get or db destroy, there's always a, a result of attempting to do an action in pouch. Uh, there is something similar uh, here in this plugin, but the syntax is different than pouch. Uh, basically, Let's do it like this. Let's write a comment right above. Take uh, Copy the same code you just wrote and put it above there. Um, you can say syntax. You can get that from the docs, of course, but we'll just put it here. The syntax is uh, you try to scan, and then what happens is there is a, a success callback. Failure callback. And then options. So to fully use this code, we then also have to say what happens if we successfully scanned the barcode, some sort of function to run at that point, or what happens if there was a failure in scanning the barcode, and we can then have optional options. So we're going to break apart that those parentheses so that's a little more readable I'm going to break the parenthesis and the first thing that it expects here is a function for success when we were working all of this time with um, Ouch. Um, we have failure first, comma, success. So anonymous function, callback function. Uh, there's a function that happens with a successful scanning, comma. Okay, what's next is the failure callback. So comma at the end there. Function success, or failure. Curly braces, comma. And then options in JSON format. So curly braces. to scan the photo if all goes well, or the, or the barcode. If all goes well, we've just extracted data from the barcode, then we're going to store it into that input field. If there's something else wrong, if, if the camera itself is broken, if the camera feature crashes, there's some sort of failure. So we'll deal with both. Uh, before that, let's uh, put in some options here. I'm going to break these curly braces apart. first option is prompt. We can add the barcode mini app 
will show up on screen. We can add a little bit of text on screen to guide or prompt the user, like what am I looking at? Um, you can say place the comics barcode in the scan area. There'll be like a little area where the barcode should fit in. We're just guiding the user. Put the barcode, you know, move the camera so that the barcode is in this area. We can word this however we want. If we don't add a prompt, it won't tell the user anything. That's not bad. But adding this prompt to guide people, you should put your barcode within the scanning area. And this is another example where stuff like this, this is how you can customize your app. We're all obviously creating the same app, but there's several places where you can customize it, such as when we talk about fonts and colors and all of that. But things like this, if you want to word this in a different way, that's fine. As long as it works, you can, uh, you can word this how you want. Next is result display duration. They're going to scan a barcode, and you can optionally um, have the user see what the barcode was. If you don't want them to see the barcode, you don't have to have this option at all. But I'm going to say 1,000 milliseconds. Scan the barcode. Have the barcode appear on screen for one second. I think it's a little too short. Let's put two seconds. So I'm going to scan it. They're going to see the code for a moment. It's going to be visible on screen anyway when it's put into that input field. Uh, but just for testing, we can uh, have it like this. Show the barcode we just scanned on screen for two seconds before switching back to saving the comic. do orientation. So if the person is using their device uh, portrait mode, most likely, um, then uh, switches to camera mode, most likely uh, you want it sideways because uh, barcodes are wide, usually. So you see this barcode is wide. If I'm trying to scan vertically, it might not fully fit within the scan area. So we're going to say the orientation of the camera is going to be portrait, just like most um, barcodes are. So orientation of the camera is landscape. The default when you scan a barcode is then it will it will um, it, it will um, beep. It can beep or not. So we will say uh, disable success beep false. Make a little beep sound after you scan the barcode. This is one of these things also very optional. You don't have to. Uh, you can put true or you can remove this and it will scan the barcode silently. I think it's useful that it makes this little beep to let the person know, okay, you did something. You, you scanned the barcode. It worked. Oh, so that we don't lose track of what this uh, little sad winking face is, uh, we'll put uh, end scan. This is our scan method. So all of these uh, come from the documentation. There's also some other ones about only allow scanning certain barcodes. Um, and some other ones I don't remember. But the developer created a variety of options. I think these are the ones that are useful in our case. There's other ones you can read up on by following the link up there back to their GitHub account, back to where the documentation is. Uh, and again, these are, these are optional. So you don't have to have any of these. This can be, uh, this can be empty. But we put in some options. Let's deal with um, failure first. So if we come back to this failure function, uh, anonymous function, um, 
keep it simple, we'll, we'll alert the user. Scanning failed. Plus whatever that failure object consists of. You might say, camera crashed, or not enough memory, or, or something. So built into this plugin is the failure object um, and the success object if one of those happens. So to the user, we will make a pop-up, scanning failed, what was the message? For success, I want to break this apart um, just because there's a couple of extra lines I want to, to do here than just a simple message. First, I want to uh, put to the console, I'll say type of barcode. When you scan a barcode, all of the information about the barcode is stored in the success object. One of the properties of that object is format. Um, this is something we can read or store in the database. Uh, maybe just for curiosity here, as we're scanning and playing with barcodes, they will also see what kind of barcode that I just scan, the format of the barcode. So in our console, we'll just tell ourselves we just scanned this kind of barcode. We'll also tell ourselves in the console what was the data of the uh, data in the barcode. And here is success.text. There's a text property. There's a two or three more properties that I have to look up back on the documentation. But what's the format of the barcode? What's that text in the barcode? So in the console, we'll just tell ourselves that. Ultimately, for the user, uh, then inside of the in barcode, in the input field, pound in barcode, this time we're going to set the value. Instead of reading the value, we're going to set the value with success.text. Set the value of the input field with the data we just scanned. So here we're saying, in the HTML, there's an uh, element with this ID in barcode. Let's set the value. Instead of reading the value, we set a value. What's the text we just scanned successfully from the barcode? Set it to that input field. And the whole idea is, remember, we've got those input fields, the ones that the user typed, and then the ones that we get from scanning or taking the photo. So then this will uh, save. Um, this will then save, or this will temporarily put the text of the barcode into the input field. Then when we click Save Comic, that's already all set up to read that field and store it into the database. So at this point, finally, we should be able to check it on the device. I'm going to take a quick look. Uh, I'm going to save everything. I'm going to take a look at my error list. No errors. Good. I'm going to run it on a device. This would be best to run on a real device. And then try to scan a barcode. Try to view the comic and it should also view it should also show you the um, the barcode data in our list of info.
check if it's working in a moment. Let's see here. So on mine, it's loading up very soon. moment the first time because it's a brand new uh, plugin with its code that needs to be compressed and optimized and all of that so after this um, loads up I'll try to run the scanner and see if it's working for mine someone scan oh good good so um, if you hear some beeps that's from our option there of do not disable beep should have uh, scanned the barcode on my device. Let me try one more time. as this starts up the um, that scanner is capable that barcode scanner okay here it is finally uh, this barcode scanner is capable of um, scanning almost every kind of barcode out there so that's why I thought it'd be fun to put in um, a little bit of console output that says what kind of barcode or the format this is so as soon as I get up here, you know, we've got output here that we can uh, that you can see as I as I go. Okay, so save comic. I have a new field. Uh, barcode. Yes, I could type what I want in there if I want. Um, there's a field below it of disabled. Um, I cannot uh, type in it. Okay, so then I press the scan barcode. Technically behind the scenes what's happening. Function scan barcode is running. Okay, that's exactly what I expected. We exited the app. That was something we did a long time ago because remember what we've got is a, an event handler for exiting and re-entering the app. So technically we've left our app for a moment and we've started up the, the scanning app. So 
that's line 702. Okay, so then I get a little red line scanner area. Things are grayed out in my case. It also depends on device. And then at the bottom it says place the comics barcode in the scan area. Well, that's the prompt that uh, I wrote earlier. So then if I have a, a uh, barcode like this one right here and I put it in on the screen, when it recognizes it, I have the volume down, but but for a moment, then I also saw the the result. Let me scan one more time. Found plain text, and it had number one zero zero something. So I see that there. Oh, and then out here, um, when I scanned a moment ago, type of barcode, it's code 39. So that kind of barcode is that. Data in the barcode, 1004710. And if I look at the barcode, I actually see that's the data there, 1004710. After successfully scanning, then we come back to the app, line 707. So the event handler that then detected, we've returned to the app, kicks in. Um, so then what's in the field here is 104 whatever. I could then go in there and edit the barcode if I want. If I don't want to do that, remember we can just add disabled to the input field. But now I've got a, uh, a barcode. Um, but now I've got a barcode that um, barcode scanner. Out of curiosity, uh, I'm going to look at this barcode on the on these wipes. If I scan again, so that scanned it, found product, whatever, and then the numbers there, 07128, right here, 07128. So, yep, scanning barcodes. There it is here. Type of barcode is a UPCA. The data there was this. Go back in the app. I'm going to save a, a comic. So I'm, I'm saving a comic, save comic true. Uh, I have one comic in the database so far. I can view a comic. I've got my table of comics. I've got one comic so far. Uh, I click the options for that comic. And then it um, pops up comic info. Question. In that line, it says Cordova plugins, barcode scanner, dot scan. Mm -hmm. um, I have a closing parentheses. Where does yours close? There's. Right Let me zoom in right here. So. Okay, so that's what's we. That's what that is. Okay. Yeah, it, it did end down here because we have the the success, the failure, the the options, and then closes right. Awesome. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be there one moment. Let me just double check one thing in my code. Let me do one more thing, then we'll uh, we'll do questions. Um, if you wanted to then view your comic info, so if I press the little uh, speech bubble, uh, it's actually not filling in my barcode yet. We didn't quite get to it. I thought we did. But we have one more thing there at about line 510. 
Remember when we had uh, show comic or view comic, we had in the zero width paragraph, let's display the title of the comic. In the third paragraph, let's display the publisher. Well, that's where we ended. We, we, we ended with notes. We didn't have barcode, we didn't have photo. So, um, we have now five, and we're going to have six. Uh, we've got display on paragraph five, success.barcode. Let's do that. Then, we'll, then I'll do questions. So, line 511, this is, I'm just going to copy the line above it, change it super easy. Um, well, fifth paragraph, sixth actually, notes.barcode. We have a brand new barcode field in our data. So let's display it on the sixth paragraph, index 5, line 511. This is in our uh, show, this is in our show comics info function. We don't have the photo yet. Let's put it in here so we don't forget about it. We'll probably get some sort of weird error, undefined or something. But let's do another one for uh, equals 6, and that's notes.photo. So now when I test that and I, and I view the comic, the barcode that I had previously scanned should appear there. So that you can rewrite the barcode? Can you instead of saying notes again, can you write the notes? You could put barcode, barcode and photo. But put it, put it where? HTML. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, good point. Yes, definitely want that. Barcode. And uh, photo. Photo is going to be a little bit different. Photo is going to be different because there is. Well, let's go ahead and write actually here what it what it needs to be. Um, this one's a little different now that I remember. It's a little bit different here because. Um, Photo is an image tag. Image tags, now obviously don't write this because this is wrong place, but obviously image is src equals image. That's what it is in the HTML. So via JavaScript, we need to set the source. So yes, in the seventh paragraph, there's going to be an image that we need to set the source attribute. All of these look exactly the same like that because in that paragraph, just write this text. Here, in this tag, in the seventh paragraph, set the attribute of source. So the code here is going to vary, first of all, the um, index 6 space img. So sort of reading it from right to left. There's an image in a paragraph equaling the seventh paragraph in this div, or reading from left to right, start with this div, find a paragraph equaling the seventh paragraph. Inside of that, you will then find an image. So right here, we're, we're getting more specific. Image inside a paragraph inside a div. OK, so there's an image tag that we are targeting here, that we are selecting. And we want to set the attribute of source, ATTR, attribute. So there's an element image in a paragraph in this div. Let's set its attribute. Well, which attribute? The SRC attribute. And then what we're setting, comma, is success.photo. This might be a good note here. Um, note difference. Um, select an image in a 
paragraph, the seventh paragraph, in a div, then set the source attribute to the path to the photo, which doesn't exist yet, which will probably be undefined or a little broken image icon. That's fine. But here it's very different from the others because the others are just plain write this text on screen. This one is an image. Um, this one is an image tag, which requires a source attribute. So, attr uh, will let us read or write to an attribute because we've got two parameters here: which attribute, what data we are writing into this attribute. So, if we just wanted to read the attribute, well, we don't need the second parameter. We just said attribute source, we would read what was in there and put it somewhere in a variable. But here we're setting the image source attribute. So let me pause here um, to do questions. Um, check, check that your code works as expected. You should be able to scan the barcode. You should be able to view the barcode once you click the um, little bubble. Um, you can uh, edit the barcode if you want. You click edit and then it will let you edit the code of the barcode and then we'll go on in just a moment. Um, let me put my code of where I'm at into the network folder and then we'll do questions. Yeah, my question 
some don't. Some don't, but also all standard devices have different sound volumes. Uh, some of them are uh, sounds for uh, errors and some are sounds for ringtones. Does that mean the settings? Well, try to raise the volume and in the pop up that happens on top, you have different kinds of volumes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so just turning it on and off. Okay, so the camera. Uh, not until you sign in and switch it. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
Now might be related to the speed of how fast you learn Thank you. 
just a little bit more lecture and then we'll go on. Or I will do a little lecture then we'll take a real break. So, um, continuing with what I was doing here. Um, so at this point it is uh, scanning the barcode. Now, the way the barcode concept works is that, you know, these numbers, uh, this data encoded into the barcode obviously has a meaning somewhere in terms of uh, these on the box of this device you know these are uh, these are barcodes that are to store in inventory somewhere so what I'm getting at is that we're scanning these barcodes for these comics but that data at the moment we're just storing it in our database it's not linked to uh, any other bigger database um, so you know how if you scan like if you're at the grocery store and you scan a product in their product scanner and it tells you the price well their their scanner access their database uh, checking your barcode to tell you today it's 599 so all that this app does at the moment is it scans the barcode to store it in the database what more you could do with that is something like you know up to you to decide what to do with it all that we're doing for the moment is just to store it in the database we can retrieve it we can build with a lot more coding of course more functionality about storing all of those barcodes linking to the comic and you know to do more with it so that's as far as what the barcode will do at the moment let's uh, set ourselves up to work with the photo when you take the photo that'll get stored into the device and um, retrieved as well let's first um, let's uncomment that event listener so we don't forget about that back to line 691 we're gonna have take photo work that was deactivated right so uncomment it out so that we can take a photo we need to create a function to take a photo. So let's back up a little bit after the after the end of our function uh, to scan a barcode I'm going to take a photo function to take a photo of the comic and we'll do the usual here some console output The basic syntax for this one's a little bit different. Navigator dot camera dot get picture. This one is one of the official Cordova plugins. You can read the full details on how the camera works at the official Cordova documentation site. Uh, but here uh, we have this navigator object um, that accesses the camera, and then we've got the get picture method. We have different methods, um, and we can uh, set this up so that we take a photo from the camera. We can actually load a photo from the memory card that's already there. So if the person already has a photo stored in their device, we can, we can load it. And this um, get picture method is similar in terms of that it also has a success or a failure callback.
So just for the notes, I'm going to paste the same as above. Um, success callback, failure callback, and options. So we'll do something very similar to the scanner. Uh, I don't doubt that the developer of the barcode scanner uh, took inspiration from the syntax and such of the uh, official Cordova photo. Uh, because uh, photo plugin, because it's very similar. The syntax here is different, but then there's you know, take a photo, and there's success, failure options. So that's very similar to what we saw with the scanner. So we will do the same thing here in that we will break this apart, separate lines, and we can say there before we lose track of it and dot get picture. Pretty much the same as before. Function, success, curly braces, comma, function, failure, curly braces, and then options. So a couple of anonymous callback functions here. We get a success object if we successfully took the photo. We get a failure object if we didn't. Let me pass in optional options. Uh, let's do the options first. So in the options over here, I'm going to break this apart. And we've got the quality property. Um, from 0 to 100, uh, what's the quality of the photo? Now, I'm going to make it very obvious here, because this is going to be a test for the final project. I want to put this as a very, very, very low quality. And if you follow me exactly right there, and then I see that you left it as a very, very, very low quality, I'll know that you're not paying attention to me. You're just hearing me drone on. So the point of this is you have a value from 0 to 100 here. And I'm going to put it to 5. You probably want to put it to something better than that, but I'll put it for five. Next line, we're going to say then, uh, save to photo album. True. The default actually is, oops, colon right here. The default is that when you um, take a photo, it's just kind of floating around in the memory. Unless you tell it, hey, maybe also save it to the memory of the device. So the default, the default is actually false. It's just going to be in the memory unless you do something with it. At the very least, I want to save it to the device. True. Next, we can set a width and the height to the photo. So we'll say uh, target width. Just to choose some values here, 768 pixels, target height, 1,024. So it'll be a portrait-sized photo. Comics are in portrait size, so vertical orientation. Um, very low quality photo that's about to be saved from 0 to 100. It's going to be saved to the device, true. We're going to go for a certain width and height for the, uh, for the photo. This is, these are all of the options of attempting to take the photo. The options for get picture. Well, we'll deal with failure first. Very similar to what we did above, in that we'll just have a pop-up that says something to the user. Say photo fail. And whatever that failure message is. And 
And for success, we'll do it the same as above. Break that apart. Console message. Got photo. And then we'll say, what is that object? That'll basically, uh, the path, the photo is going to get saved to the device. And there is a path, a file path to that photo that is in that success object. So if, you, if you're curious, you can see that in the console, where exactly in my device am I uh, storing that photo? Well, uh, again, like with the barcode scanner, the point here then is, uh, we're not saving the, um, the raw pixel data of the photo, we are uh, saving a path to the photo. Well, we're going to put that um, path to the photo in that input field in photo. We're going to set the value of that to be the success object, the path to the photo. So we're uh, we're saving the path. We're putting temporarily the path to the fo to that photo in that input field. Then when we click save and all of that, that's going to be one of the things that's also bundled together in the comic data saved into the database. So it's being it's there sort of temporarily for the um, for our input. Besides that. Uh, that's all that's necessary there. Get picture. There is a success or a failure. There are options. Uh, double check your commas and all of that. There's a comma at the end of failure. All of these have commas except the last one. No final comma in our parameters of get picture. End of get picture. So um, we can uh, test it. So you can try that with a device question. Which one? 7-Eleven. Uh, that's a little bit further down there, maybe? Yep. Function, scan barcode, the usual on click. So we can try this. Go ahead and save your work. Try to run this on a device. Press the button to take a photo. Watch your console. See if it pops up to tell you you're launching the camera. Depending on your device, I've seen some that um, the device pops up with the camera and then you have to press on the camera to take the photo. And I've seen some that have the actual icon, you know, click here to take the photo. So that's going to depend on the device. Uh, Try it, try it out and see if you can take a photo of the of the comic and then try to see view comic and see if the photo appears it probably won't quite look right but we'll, we'll still get we're still getting to that so try it out in your browser uh, this time we will do the real break it's 810 you can take a break until 820 to confirm this works.